Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 IMO Award Ceremony. Every year, IMO honors and recognizes individuals who have contributed greatly to the objectives of the organization through their dedicated work and through exceptional acts of bravery at sea. This evening, we will present the International Maritime Prize for 2020 and the IMO Awards for Exceptional Bravery at Sea for 2021. To open proceedings, it gives me great pleasure to hand the floor to the IMO Secretary General, Mr. Keetak Lim. Uh, Mr. President, Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates and Observers, Ladies and Gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 IMO Awards Ceremony, bringing together this organization's two most prestigious awards, which have become a true IMO tradition. The International Maritime Prize was first presented in 1981. Since then, we have seen a succession of highly distinguished people receive the award from across the world. The IMO Awards for Exceptional Bravery at the Sea is now in its 11th year, and the previous winners include seafarers, professional rescuers who, at the risk of losing their own life, performed acts of exceptional bravery, displaying outstanding courage in attempting to save life at the sea, or to prevent or mitigate the damage to the marine environment. Both awards therefore recognize individuals who have the IMO mission in their hearts, the safety of life at sea, and the pollution prevention. The recipient of the 2020 International Maritime Prize is someone who has spent many days here in the IMO corridors and has dedicated his entire career to shipping safety and the marine maritime industry. Mr. Paul Sadler. And we are deeply honored that he is here with us this evening. And I would like to invite him to come forward, please. Secretary General, President, Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Secretary General, for those very kind words. I thought at one stage I was going to have to fine you for using my copyrighted um, phrase of effective and efficient implementation of regulations, but you just veered away from it. <laughs> just at the right time. Thank you, sir. It is amazing to stand here with so many friends and familiar faces in front of me. Thank you so much for making the effort to come here, especially those of you who have come thousands of miles. It is very special. I understand that you have already listened to a number of speeches today. Consequently, I am assuming you would prefer to hear the short rather than the long version of what I have to say. However, as I have often said in this room, brevity does not imply any lack of sincerity. First, I must thank the Council for deciding that I should receive this award. However, that would not have happened if I had not been nominated by the Government of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I have to say that bit carefully in case there's an ex-chairman of the Maritime Safety Committee listening in. <laughs> and I also need to thank, of course, the International Association of Classification Societies and I would like to formally place on record my thanks to both the UK Government and to the IACS Council. 
I firmly believe I am only receiving this award because of all the talented, inspiring and dedicated people I have had the good fortune of working with, not just in the UK's Maritime and Coast Guard Agency and IACS, but also here at the IMO. A long time ago, I did port state control inspections. Sometimes I had to decide whether to detain a ship or not. In my experience, this question did not always have a simple yes or no answer. What sometimes helped me reach a decision was to think how I would feel when driving that short distance home in the evening to my loved ones. If I had allowed a ship to sail, then it, and more importantly, those on board, would be heading out into the English Channel and then often into the North Atlantic. How safe would they be when I went to bed that night? The people I worked with also had this thinking at the core of everything they did. To me, it is summarized in the inspiring narrative that begins, they that go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters. Words that are inscribed on the walls of the general committee room of the oldest classification society, providing a constant reminder to all those who meet there of how their work is focused on keeping ships and those on board safe. Shipping is a truly global industry. It therefore needs a global regulator to facilitate a global level playing field. This simple line of logic leads to the conclusion that if the IMO didn't exist, it would have to be invented. However, I believe it is not just that the IMO is needed to facilitate global trade that spurs you, year after year, to prepare carefully for and participate actively in IMO meetings. It is also in my belief that when you go home to your loved ones after an IMO meeting, you know you have played a vital role in getting all those who go down to the sea in ships safely home to their loved ones. Collectively and individually, you should therefore remember to take time to remind yourselves and take great pride in the work that is done in this house. Finally, memories are a very special part of life. This evening and this award have given me and my family a very special memory. Thank you very much. We will begin the first category of the award, Letters of Commendation. The master and crew of the emergency rescue and response vessel, Esvakt Kantana, nominated by Denmark. The crews of the fishing vessels Takei Maru, Hisae Maru, Eiko Maru, and Tomo Maru, nominated by Japan. Ensign Jose Luis Sandoval Estrada, chief of the speedboat squadron, with the naval force of the Nicaraguan armies, nominated by Nicaragua. Captain Bogdan Rusu, master of the MV Costco Malaysia, nominated by Romania. The master and crew of the oil tanker B.W. Rhine, nominated by Singapore. The 
Aviation Survival Technician Second Class Christopher Fisher from the United States Coast Guard, Air Station Elizabeth City, nominated by the United States. Congratulations to all of them. Further details of their courageous actions are available on the IMO website. The next category of the award is Certificates of Commendation. The first certificate is awarded to Captain Ritesh Madhusudan Bamaria, a marine pilot on board the MT Godam, Torres Pilots, nominated by Australia and the International Transport Workers Federation separately for his decisiveness and extraordinary ship handling expertise displayed during the rescue of two fishermen who had been clinging to a wooden plank for more than 15 hours in treacherous sea conditions caused by adverse weather and the proximity to the coral reef. Captain Bamaria skillfully navigated the vessel in the shallow, restricted waters and raced against time to save the fishermen from the rough seas, surrounding sharks and certain death. We would like to thank the Government of Australia and the ITF for nominating such a courageous recipient. The next certificate is awarded to the members of the diving rescue team of the Guangzhou Rescue Base, Nanhai Rescue Bureau, nominated by China. Their names are Captain Hui Guang Yi, Mr. Tian Si Lan, Mr. Ming Zong Deng, Mr. Zi Wei Yu, Mr. Hai Le Zeng, and Mr. Yu Hui Zong and they have been nominated for their courage and diligence displayed in the underwater search and rescue operations of nine crew members of the capsized 129 meter long bulk cargo carrier Hong Xiang 819. As a result of their professional actions, using the wreck as a working platform for their thorough search for survivors, despite an unstable sinking vessel and hazardous obstacles, they managed to rescue the only survivor after being trapped for 20 hours in a cargo hold and recovered the remains of four casualties. We would like to thank the government of China for nominating such heroic recipients. The next certificate is awarded to members of the Marine Rescue Service Azovo Chernomorsky Branch, nominated by the Russian Federation Mr. Anton Muradyants, Mr. Gambik Asaturian, Mr. Denis Nikolenko, Mr. Kirill Vikulov, and Mr. Konstantin Kendigilian for their remarkable courage and tenacity displayed during the emergency operation on board the MV April, which was flooding carrying dangerous cargo while under the constant threat of explosions and in heavy weather conditions. The nominees identified the source of the water ingress and efficiently performed the emergency works required thus preventing the sinking of the MB April and the spillage of tons of harmful chemicals into the sea. We would like to thank the government of the Russian Federation for nominating such worthy recipients. The next certificate is awarded to the members of the Degak 20 Diving Safety Security Search and Rescue Team from the Turkish Coast Guard Command, nominated by Turkey. Their names are Mr. Doruk Durmuş Yildiz, Mr. Atakan Ömer Yenilmez, Mr. Erkan Baytekin, and Mr. Olkan Ibrahim Temeloglu. They have been nominated for their courage and determination in the rescue of the crew of the capsized fishing boat Kumsal 55. After rescuing 10 survivors and locating an unconscious crew member, who was carefully brought up to the surface by divers, they came up with and successfully executed a challenging plan to rescue in complete darkness and very dangerous underwater conditions including floating objects and diesel fuel, a crew member who was trapped in the cabin and unable to swim, and also recovered the remains of a casualty. We would like to thank the government of Turkey for nominating such courageous recipients. The next certificate is awarded to Aviation Survival Technician First Class Joshua Mayfield, Coast Guard Air Station Elizabeth City, North Carolina, United States Coast Guard, nominated by the United States for his exceptional bravery and endurance during the challenging rescue in complete darkness, crashing waves and gale force winds of two mariners from a sailing vessel which had lost power. AST-1 Mayfield spent 60 minutes in frigid waters 
swimming constantly through the tumultuous seas to keep the survivors afloat and lift them into the swinging rescue basket to be hoisted to safety. We would like to thank the government of the United States for nominating such a worthy recipient. The next certificate is awarded to Petty Officer First Class Wallace Qual, Coast Guard Station Yakina Bay, United States Coast Guard, nominated by the United States for his remarkable courage, initiative and fortitude displayed in the rescue operation of the master of the sinking vessel legend after all other rescue options were discarded due to extreme conditions caused by local wildfires and the vessel's proximity to the surf zone. BM-1 Qual expertly led a beach crew in the midst of thick smoke, sandstorm, and ash-filled air to reach the scene. He then battled powerful currents when swimming 300 yards on two occasions and managed to rescue the master just in time to keep him from slipping below the surface. We would like to thank the government of the United States for nominating such a worthy recipient. The next certificate is awarded to Lieutenant Justin Neal, Lieutenant Jonathan Orthman, Avionics Electrical Technician 2nd Class James Schwader, and Aviation Survival Technician 2nd Class Grant Roberts of the United States Coast Guard Air Station Sitka, nominated by the United States for their bravery, professionalism, and endurance demonstrated during the search and rescue of the sole survivor of the sinking F.V. Irony, who was found clinging to debris and in a state of panic. As a result of their exemplary team effort, they successfully completed their mission at the edge of the aircraft's effective range, employing all sensors to conduct the search and hoist the survivor in complete darkness, storm force wind, and 12-foot waves. We would like to thank the government of the United States for nominating such courageous recipients. The next certificate, in recognition of the combined exceptional effort from everyone involved in the rescue operation of the MT New Diamond, is shared by India and Sri Lanka. The ship caught fire and was drifting toward the coast laden with dangerous cargo. The recipients of this certificate are Commander Raj Kishore, Lieutenant Commander A. V. Tomar, Chief Petty Officer P. Bhagwan, Petty Officer Sahil, Seaman First Class Sarvashakti, Members of the Indian Coast Guard Pradhan Adhikari Satish, Commandant B. Bhat Navik RP, Abhishek Tomar Navik RP, Kaushik Nautiyal. As well as Captain Majini Malayalathan and crew of the tugboat Ocean Bliss, nominated by India who skillfully towed the vessel away from the coast, brought the vessel under control, and carried out effective firefighting, thus preventing a serious marine pollution incident, and Commander KRGRS Rantena, PSC, Lieutenant KGASM Bayaratne, Leading Engineer Mechanic DLK Mudiance, and Able Seaman WGGU Senarathna, crew members of the patrol boat SLNS Ranarisi, Sri Lanka Navy, nominated by Sri Lanka, who bravely planned, coordinated, and executed the challenging evacuation of one casualty and two crew members remaining on board the vessel after the majority of the crew abandoned ship. We would like to thank the governments of India and Sri Lanka for nominating such heroic recipients. And now, the highest category of award. This year, the IMO Council decided that the 2021 medal should go to Mr. Tran Van Khoi, a search and rescue officer of the Regional Maritime Search and Rescue Coordination Center No. 2, Vietnam Maritime Administration, nominated by Vietnam, for his extraordinary courage, determination, and endurance displayed in rescuing four survivors from a sunken vessel in the midst of extreme weather and heavy seas. On the 8th of October 2020, the cargo vessel Viet Ship 01 was swept away as it was docking, 
due to widespread flooding and wind gusts of 74 km per hour caused by Typhoon Linfa, made it very difficult for rescue efforts and the vessel sank to the bottom in shallow waters, leaving its 12 crew members trapped on board and gathering on the roof of the cabin. On the early morning of the 9th of October, Mr. Coy was on shore watch duty when he witnessed two crew members being washed into the sea by strong waves. Without hesitation, he tied a rope to his body and swam through five meter waves and strong currents, rescuing both of them. In the afternoon, two more crew members fell into the water and were fortunately tossed ashore by the waves. The following day, a fishing vessel tried to approach the Viet ship 01, but sank before it could reach it. One fisherman was swept ashore by rough waves, but the other three had to climb onto the Viet ship 01 for safety. On the afternoon of the 10th of October, Mr. Coy volunteered to try a new approach on another fishing vessel. Two more crew members jumped into the water and Mr. Coy risked his life yet again, swimming amidst the raging waves to help them board the fishing vessel. Later in the afternoon, he volunteered to steer a rib coach boat against the fierce seas at great risk of overturning the boat after its engine stopped working due to significant flooding. Mr. Coy and his crew quickly fixed the engine problem and continued trying to approach the Viet ship 01 to no avail. They were exhausted, it was dark, and they were ordered to return to shore. The final act of the rescue operation took place on the 11th of October 2020, after rescue helicopters were deployed to the scene and the rest of the survivors were hoisted to safety. Mr. Tran Van Khoi, through his courageous actions and tireless attempts in a rescue operation that lasted over three days, demonstrated truly exceptional bravery and determination. Tôi luôn thực hiện thành công mọi nhiệm vụ được giao, sẵn sàng xả thân, cống hiến cứu người. Đặc biệt với những vụ việc phức tạp nguy hiểm, tôi rất vinh dự và xúc động khi được đề cử danh hiệu cao quý. Hành động dùng cảm đặc biệt trên biển năm 2021 của Tổ chức Hàng hải Quốc tế. Tôi hy vọng rằng với sự ghi nhận này, tôi có thể lan tỏa tinh thần dùng cảm, ý chí quật cường của con người Việt Nam, đặc biệt đến thuyền viên cả nước để trong tương lai ta có thể thêm nhiều tấm gương khác tiếp tục phấn đấu xây dựng một ngành hàng hải nước nhà phát triển. We would like to thank the government of Vietnam for nominating such an outstanding individual. Ladies and gentlemen, we are deeply honored to have here with us this evening Mrs. Tho Minh Thu, who is the Chargé d'Affaires at the Embassy of Vietnam, and I'd like her to come forward to receive the medal and certificate on behalf of Mr. Chen Van Khoi. Thank you very much. His Excellencies, Mr. President and Mr. Secretary General, Ambassadors and representatives of the IMO member countries, Officer Chen Van Khoi and Vietnam Maritime Officer, who are participating online from my home country, Vietnam. Ladies and gentlemen, the video is so moved. It is my great honor to be here today as a headquarter of the International Marine Marine Time Organization for the Special IMO Award Ceremony. That will be a very memorable moment in my life. I'm so touched and proud that my fellow citizen, the crewman Chen Van Hoi, was nominated for the Noble IMO Award for Exceptional Bravery at Sea. Officer Hoi has well demonstrated the brave spirit of generations of Vietnamese maritime search and rescue. Being a great source of encouragement for Vietnamese rescue today and in the future. A warrior at sea like Mr. Hoi is the pride of the Vietnamese maritime forces. Officer Hoi, you may be watching from Vietnam. Congratulations to you and the team. And on behalf of the government and the people of Vietnam, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to the IMO Council and staff 
for all your support for Vietnam and for the Nobel Award to Officer Chen Van Khoi. As the Embassy of Vietnam in London, we will do our utmost to facilitate the effective cooperation between Vietnam and the IMO and to promote maritime development in Vietnam. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony for the presentation of this year's IMO Awards. And I wish to offer our warm and sincere congratulations to all the worthy recipients and to the governments and organizations that nominated them. We thank you for joining us here this evening and hello to everybody online. Thank you.